Acts 1, 4 and 5, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them to not to depart from Jerusalem, Acts 1, 4 and 5, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, and he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. John 1, 4 and 5, reading from the New King James Version. I want to talk for a few more minutes about the miracle of Pentecost. The miracle of Pentecost. Luke is the writer here and he's speaking the words of Jesus to the disciples, informing them again about what was going to take place. And they were not to depart or leave Jerusalem, that's the epic center, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, I, you have heard of from me. So he had been talking about this outpouring of the Spirit while they were tracking with him. It is coming, it's coming, it's coming. But John baptized you, watch this, unto repentance in water, unto repentance. But here it says into water, into repentance or turning your hearts back to God. But you should be baptized, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So the baptism of the Spirit is relevant for now. And it's something that all of you should proceed and go after the full baptism or emerging in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not dead. It is alive. It's active. It has Zoe. It has life. Old church would say, if you got it, you ought to show some signs. And if you're alive, you at least just let somebody know I'm, I'm alive. You may not run, you may not jump, you may not shout, you may not, but at least there should be some demonstration of an outward expression of an inward change. The Bible says in the book of Romans, the Holy Spirit brings love, it brings joy, and it brings peace. Some of you ever haven't had love in a long time. You have little, little, little joy, and you have no peace. But the Holy Spirit brings a dynamite package of love, joy, and peace. It's in the package. Hmm. The promise of the Holy Spirit, the disciples were obedient to the instructions. Wait there, Terry, waiting in Jerusalem for the coming of the Spirit. And he came and he empowered them. The disciples were waiting and it came. It did not come because they were waiting, but the Holy Spirit came because he promised it. The Holy Spirit is promised to you, not because House said it, because Jesus said it. I would not want to live without any promises God has for me. Everything he promised, that's what I want. A promise is not something that you work for. It's not something that you have to go and have to sell things for. It's a gift. It's been promised to me, not by demand, but by promise. He promised it to me, so I want it. Well, I don't want all that Holy Spirit stuff. Then what other spirit do you want? <laughs> it's gonna be, you sure don't want it to be controlled by your spirit. Because no man is just within their own spirit. This promise they waited for, Luke 24 and 49, says it like this. Behold, I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry you, Luke 24 and 49. But wait, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued or you are endowed with power from on high. So this Holy Spirit is not coming from the IRS. It's not coming from the government. It's not coming from your mother. It's not coming through birth. But it's coming from a power that's on high. It's a power above all other powers. Are you tracking with me? So the Holy Spirit then has authority and power over anything that you think is overpowering you. It's a power from on high. It cannot be contaminated. It has the ability to destroy. It can bind and lose. You can go free right now and tell the devil, take the rest of the week off because God has given you the power to speak to the devil and run him out your house. Raise your right hand and say, I got household power. The devil ain't running my house. The devil ain't running my house. He ain't running my children. Amen. Now I go in there while they sleep and play over a pair of all them clothes. Put some oil in the shoes. All right, go on, go to school. Act a fool if you want to. 
You be going to school, I don't know what's wrong. I know you don't know what's wrong, but thank God for the Holy Spirit that leads in God. Tell your neighbor, it's not your driving skills. Thank God for the Holy Ghost that's leading and guiding you. Getting you from one dish, shut up. Getting you from one destination to the next. You better check it and ask somebody. You're not that talented. But God's spirit is that faithful. This power is coming from on high. And they were waiting there, preparing his disciples. He were waiting as they were preparing for this, for this great deluge that's going to begin to birth the church. Pentecost has been referred to as the birth of the church. You know, today we celebrate it. We want to go back to it and thank God for the beginning and the birth of something as the first mentioned principle shows you a continuation of that. So we come and we sit today and we wait. Historically, Pentecost was in AD 33, the time that Jesus died. If you follow scriptures, he says, except the grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it's not Germany, but if it dies, it brings forth much, much fruit. So he died, but death could not hold him. Death could only be a tool to get him to where he was trying to get to. In the same book, I think, in, this, in the first chapter, or the, uh, the second chapter, it says death could not hold him. It was impossible for death to hold him. So if it was impossible for the death to hold Jesus, then death can't hold you. For to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. If the same spirit that lives in you that raised Jesus from the dead, then it will also quicken or bring to life your mortal bodies. And every morning you wake up, you have a prelude to a rapture. Because the spirit inside of you says, time to wake up. Not the alarm clock, not your, not your, not your watching your, your, your time. The spirit comes back and say, wake up again. So that's why you wake up and say, Lord, I thank you for one more day. So the first thing I do when I wake up and say, Father, I bless you for life. You could have took me in the night season, but I woke up and devil, you in trouble this morning. Because everything you did yesterday and I couldn't get it, but I got a brand new day to get. Give God a brand new day, pray. Come on, you church. Don't sit back on that couch quiet. I said, give God a brand new day, pray. This divine, supernatural thing took place. It was given to the disciples, 12 of them, that they would have the promise of the Spirit. He had to give this to them because they had a powerful job to do. I cringe for preachers and anyone that's following someone that calls themselves a preacher and that person does not have any spirit of God inside of them. The blind will lead the blind and they both will fall into the same ditch. So you need the spirit of God to do this job. So he tells the disciples, the promise, the promise of the spirit is coming to you. It's gonna empower you and fill you to do the divine commission. What is the divine commission? Matthew 28. 1820. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given, you've been given, I've been given all authority. He has risen from the dead. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There's a lot in this very context there, but I want you just to see the fact that he had to empower them with this spirit. And the spirit that he gave them, I want them to be engulfed or emerged in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know who I am in every sense. I am Son because I am in your redemption. I am Father in the creation. I am Holy Spirit for your inspiration and your guidance. So you're going to be baptized in all of these. The Son because of regeneration. The Father because of creation. I know who my God is. I'm not looking for another God a white God, black God, blue God. I know who my God is. And also the Holy Spirit. The problem with most of the church today, you have not been deluged in the Holy Spirit. You may have an understanding of the Father and a standard of the Son, but have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? And I'll know, you'll know when you've been baptized, not dipped, not trickled, but baptized in the Holy Spirit. All that old anger nature, it'll run about your life. You won't come back with that same attitude 
renewed once you've been born anew. I've got some mad folk, but hang on, it's going to get better in a moment. You need to be baptized and command all nations. So the Holy Spirit is not just for the USA. It's for every nation and every tongue under heaven. And thank God I've been to a few nations and nobody can praise harder than Africans. Oh my God, them Ghanaians just go off. Like we just met, we got all got a thousand dollars and their average income in, in, in Ghana, if a person's working on the, or selling things on the corner, their average income per day is $2.50. But when they get to church, please, they'll run you out the building, praising God like they didn't lost their mind. Maybe we got too much and we can't praise God. No, Lord, don't take nothing away. I'll up my praise. How many say, Lord, I'll up my praise. I'll, I'll just up my praise. I'll up my praise. Because somebody say, your prayer stopped it. Oh, come on, tell them. Your prayer stopped it. But your praise broke it. Sometimes you have to realize I got to move into another level of praise. Throughout the ages, he wants them to know, I'm going to be with you. And that's the beauty of the church today, that God is with us. Because the enemy is on track to try to destroy us. But thank God, the miracle of Pentecost, that God is with us. I'm moving. Acts 1 and 8, he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the, uh, to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 and 8, that's New Living Translation. That power you have of the Holy Spirit, it activates something in you that it just targets you to people. And you don't wait to come to church to turn to a neighbor. You can be in our person and say, you know what? I just feel the Lord telling me to tell you, you know, I see your life is going to change because you're meeting me today. I'm the one who's going to tell you about Jesus because I, I feel there's a connection here for me to give you my testimony. I was, I, I was in the world, but not of the world. I was out in the world doing a crazy stuff. And I think I could never get saved, but God saved me. And when God saved me, he can save anybody. I, I know, I don't know you from nobody, but I, I, since, I, since you asked me for $2, I'm going to give you a five dollar sermon so <laughs> since you came my way and I didn't call call for you I'm gonna go on and give you what's on my mind you know Jesus did these things in my life because nobody else could do it I couldn't break habits I couldn't get over myself my family had hurt me my mother ran out on me my daddy violated my cousins them did me wrong everybody came up against me. but look at my life now since I met Jesus I could never have been this way had I not met Jesus I went through the other programs I took the Prozac I took the pills but since I met Jesus I walk around so full of peace and joy you should want to have this same Jesus in your life because I need to be a witness I should not come to church next week without one somebody I should have at least one somebody that I know needs to know about Jesus it's gonna be throughout the whole earth this miracle of Pentecost it's a time of the Feast of Pentecost. It's a time of the Feast of Passover. It's a time of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Pentecost is a time of Feast of Wheat. It took time out to celebrate what God had done. This first fruits of the harvest was presented. In the book of Leviticus, you will find this in 23rd chapter. That it came time for the harvest. They would bring the first sheave and wave it before the Lord. The first thing you bring is the first fruits and they wave it before the Lord. And Jesus Christ here is displaying that he is the first fruits from the dead and after he was waved 50 days after he got up here we're now at Pentecost Pentecost is the significance of 50 so I want you to get a $50 offering in your hand in just a moment so 50 here signifies Jubilee every now and then the preacher would ask for a Jubilee offering and but God is leading him or her to do that but you bring that 50 say Lord I thank you for the Jubilee the Jubilee is that my sheaves and what you have given me are coming back up what Jesus did in my life no one else could do for me. He didn't go in the grave and stay, but he rose with all power in heaven and earth. And when he got up, he became the first fruits from the dead. And now you and I are the offsprings of those fruits. John 15 says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you should ask what you will and it shall be done to you. If you got the right connection, then you're able to get the right results. But the same spirit now, Christ being the first fruits from the dead, we now give him praise. The Jews knew this so they numbered these days after the 
first Sabbath. They went on down through seven Sabbaths. And we come now as we are today, this morning, celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. Peter and the apostles became the apostle to the Jews. Paul became the apostles to the Gentiles. And they both together evangelized the church and brought in the foundation of the church. So now we run to Acts 2 and 1. After sitting and waiting for the Holy Spirit to come, they were gathered together in one place in one accord. The action has already took place, but they were sitting with expectation. Isn't it something to go to somebody's table for dinner and ain't nothing on it? They said, well, we're working on it still. You don't smell nothing in the house, but they talking about a meal that ain't happened. But Jesus is not like a person, a chef, that won't go cook a meal and then have you sitting there waiting. He won't keep you waiting for long. You've been waiting for the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit been waiting on you because it's already on the table. Remember, it's not because they were waiting, but because he promised it. Even now while I'm speaking, I feel it in my spirit. Someone said, I'm about to catch this thing this morning. It's a matter of your faith opening up and trusting God to give it to you. Not someone laying hands on you, not be running around the building, but for you just engulfing the word. It's Lord, fill me with your spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to set on me this morning. Back over there in the corner, I'm not ashamed to say, I want him to set on me. The preacher said he came and set on them. I want this spirit to set on me this morning. Set in my area till my neighbor get nervous and realize that God is still moving in the building. He doesn't have to come forward and set on you. The Bible says he's so close to you, he's nigh thee, even in your mouth. The word of faith that I'm preaching right now. Holy Spirit is so activated in this room right now. All you need to do is open your mouth and say, Lord, I trust you. To get, oh, come on, don't be afraid. Give it to me right now. Put your hand on your the Lord set on me. Just let your power set on me, set on me, set on me, set on me. I need five people that want the Holy Ghost right now. You don't have it. Five people that want the Holy Ghost. Meet me at the altar right now. Meet me at the altar right now. Meet me at the altar right now. Come on, come on. Let me move our gospel. You want the Holy Ghost. I want you to just come at this altar and sit right here. Just sit right here. That's one. I want you to come right now and watch God move. Come on, come on, quickly. Come. Just sit right there. Sit right there. You come, young man. Sit right there. Sit right there. Just just sit right here, mother. Just sit right here. Sit right here. Sit right here. Don't y'all spectate. Participate. Because you used to be in the set. If you want the Holy Ghost, come right now. Come on. 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 Just sit. Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Anywhere. Take a seat. Take a seat. All oh, y'all didn't let me move into my prophetic. God, this shifts at the whole room. Some of y'all nervous about what's going on. God's about to show you a Pentecostal expression that happened over 2,000 years ago. Just sit right down. 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 Mm -hmm. I need more chairs. Ministers, you might have to give up your front row seat. Just sit right down. Just sit Sit right down. Dad, I want you to sit in that chair. Bring that blue chair for Dad. Bring that blue chair for Dad. The Bible says they were sitting in one place. Now here's our problem. I need you to shift with me. They were on one accord. Some of y'all are still thinking about brunch. Some of y'all are still thinking about what you left at home. But I challenge you to pull your mind in and say, God, I need to be in sync with what you're doing right now. They sit there on one accord in one place. In one accord, in one place. In one accord, in one place. Sit down in the audience. Sit down. One accord. Sit, 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 sit. Sit, sit, sit. One accord in one place. 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 Get our chair. Get our chair. Sit sitting. 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 Now here's our blessed reward. Over 2,000 years ago, it was promised. So we don't have to sit here long. It's already been given. But believers that believe it will tap into this with me and believe God for the move of God. As they were sitting, sitting, come Victoria, just touch each person on their head. As they were sitting, in the next two minutes, I want everyone in this room to raise up a shout 
and a cry. Jesus, I want you to open your mouth as loud as you can and clap your hands as strong as you can and shift this place. If you're online, stay with us. Come on. Tap in, church. Tap in. Tap in. Tap in. Tap in. Tap in. Do we need more chairs? We have chairs over here. Here it comes. Yeshi Are you ready, congregation? Are you ready to send a cry of praise and break through in this house? Are you ready to explode in celebration like Pentecost? Waiting, waiting, waiting. And suddenly, all unexpected, there came a sound from heaven as a Russian mighty wind. And it began to feel all the house. No one was left out, but the whole house became filled. That sitting on them with clothing tongues, split tongues like a fire, and began to fill the house. Clap your hands now, say, Lord, fill this house. Hear la bosa. I see you, Holy Ghost. Come on, Zion. We are about to have another Pentecostal experience. Come on, just work with me. I'll leave you alone and say, Lord, fill this house. Fill this house. Fill this house. Oh, God. Fill this house. Feel it, 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 feel it. Feel this house. Feel this house. Feel this house. Yeah. Shut that robo sick. Now, 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 now. Come on, raise your praise. Just one more level. Raise your praise. One more level. Suddenly. Unexpectedly, it's a sound from heaven. Feel in every house. Hallelujah! 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 This is the sound of Pentecost. What believers were crying out, and God began to feel, refill. Every vessel in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do it again, God. Do it again, God. Do it again, God. Come on, Zion, give me one more round. Clap your hands and Lord, do it again. Do it again. Ministers, move in, lay hands. Do it again. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Share the level. Yeah. Yes. Come on, Connie, come on. Right here. Come on. Shut up. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Don't be afraid. It's got to happen. It right now, you're at home. Receive it in Jesus' name. Here go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shut up. Robo will say. Shut up. Ministers, let me know when you get one. Let me know when you get one. Let me know. Here is one. Here is one. Somebody shout glory. Here is one. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory. Feel it. Feel them. Feel them. Feel them. Right where we're sitting. Feel
feel him, feel him, feel him, feel him. Rabba Bosse. Shandela la la bossa. Hallelujah. in the room sit down say Holy Spirit set on me Holy Spirit set on me Holy Spirit set on me Hold your hands up. The Spirit of God is visiting us this morning. Somebody came desperate and hungry. I need a move of God. I need an outpouring. I don't need another church service. I need God. And I'm chasing him this morning. I gotta get to him. I need him. Jesus. Shut up. Jesus. 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 Fire! Hold your hands up. Jesus. I'm, I'm almost done. But I'm chasing something. And I know God has it here. You came. Here's another soul. Give God a praise right here. She's coming all the way through. Where are you? Where are you? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Put one hand on top of your head. Say, Lord, set on me. Holy Spirit, set on me. Rest on me. In the name of Jesus. You may put your hands down. Don't clap. Here's my last presentation. The Bible says this promise in Acts 2, 38, 39 is not only unto you, but unto your children and to many that are far off. Can you imagine your children living in the next generation? 
without Jesus. Can you imagine your children living now without Jesus? Mothers with new babies. The joy is that it's not just for me. So I got to pass it on to my children. And they got to pass it on to their children. They got to pass it on to their children. We need the Holy Ghost in every generation. Thank God for transgenerational or motion, or movement generational Holy Spirit. Multi-generational Holy Spirit. I know we don't say trans too much, get in trouble. But multi-generation. Tommy House, my father's mother, the matriarch, passed it on to 14 children. And Woolly House, my dad, Marcus's dad. Woolly House passed it on to us. And we passed it on to our children. And our children passed it on to their children. No break in the line. We got it early enough that when we did go astray, the Holy Spirit just brought you on back. I say, it's where you belong. So now, you have to keep it going and keep it going. I want every, 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 every spirit, spirit filled believer that's in this room, get on your feet right now. Look at another spirit filled believer. If you're able to stand, some of you can't stand. Look at another spirit filled believer and say, I'm got it. I said, I'm, tell them, I got it. Just in time. If you got it, give God a praise like you're thankful. If you're online, if you got it, every chain will be broken. No weapon formed shall prosper. Any attacks will be destroyed. Every yoke will be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Give God a clap and a shout in this house. And thank God for the miracle of Pentecost. Release them, release them, release them, release them. We have one more. Refreshing. Oh, he was refreshing, refreshing. Refreshing. One more. Give God a praise in there. Hallelujah. Shade the Lobosa. God bless you. Is it real? Is it real? It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Somebody gave it to you. Jesus. Jesus gave it to me. <laughs> Were you expecting it? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah. You think it would ever happen? No, I didn't. What did it sound like? It just—it's overwhelming, to be honest with you. <laughs> Tell somebody, it's overwhelming, but it's real. Step back with me, Sarah. Something about the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. I got it. God bless you. All you at the altar, God bless you. One more here. We got one more right here. Come on, give God some praise. I think we got eight. She's still in, she's still in, she's still in. Mother's still in, mother's still in. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you all. <laughs> God bless you all. You can turn back to your seats. If you're at home, please put in the chat. I was sitting on my couch while y'all were praying and I got it. I was on my way to work, had to pull over, but I got it. That is real in my life. The only reason you're gonna leave it today and don't get it, cause you don't want it. One more, one more dad, Whew, look, one more here. Come on, give God some praise. In this place. Dad said when he was speaking in tongues, God told him the cancer was drying up. I need somebody to celebrate. That is, oh, y'all ain't act like he's a, still a healer. He's still a healer. He's still a miracle worker. Come on, Zion. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and give somebody a high five. Tell them whatever it was, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Woo. Somebody
some of y'all tired already. I need some church folk that want to have a Pentecostal move. Shake one neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I may not leave a will, but these kids gonna get this Holy Ghost. I tell you that. I may not leave no money, but they gonna get this Holy Ghost. If I leave them some Jesus, then everything they need, God will supply. Come on, shout about it. this is for but I prophesy the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit is bringing your kids back home they thought they got away but the Holy Spirit knows exactly where they're at and God told me to tell you there you go there you go shout about it I'm bringing your babies back home miracle of Pentecost. Come on, rest on your feet all over the room. If you're able to stand, it's my last stand. Greet three people, tell them it's real. It's real. So many people doubt it but I can't live without it. That's why I love him so. He's so real. Real to me. Raise your hands up, Father, I bless you. Oh, what a joy. What a peace of line. You could have picked over me, but you picked me out to be the salvation of my family and my children's children. I will not handle this recklessly, but I'll be forever grateful that you saved me, that you filled me with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I am thankful. I would be a total wreck without you in my life. And all that I am is because of you. In the name of Jesus, I'll shout about it. I'll witness about it. I'll tell the world about it. What Jesus has done in my life. Mm -hmm. How sweet it is to know the Savior. Hallelujah. My God. Ladies, holler Jesus. Men, holler Savior. Ladies, holler glory. All right, show offs. Men, holler hallelujah. Everybody holler Jesus. Jesus. Come on, clap your hands in the house. <laughs> Sweeter as the day go by. Every day with Jesus. It's sweeter than the day before. My God. Mm. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. Nobody too. Nobody. Hallelujah. I'm trying to let you go. I, I need to go, but could you just worship one time? Just raise your hands and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful. 
Thank you for coming to my house and filling my house, this personal temple and also my personal dwelling. Thank you. Last affirmation, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. God bless you.